Somebody should have told me it would be like this Be like this Be like this Somebody should have told me it would be like this Yeah Life is a What's going on YouTube? This is Joe's McFly Hitting you up with another reaction video To another Yankee game And you know what? Today I'll just start off by saying I was at today's game so I've seen everything firsthand. I want, I want to find, and I know that there are some, some subscribers that leave comments and that tell me and try to sell me that Clippard, and you know who you are, that Clippard is not as bad as what we think he really is. I want you, I want you to have the balls to tell me and show me right now. Show me. Tell me right now how Clippard is not a freaking albatross. I mean, I, I can't with that guy. And then his facial expressions also when he comes back to the bench after he gives up is like, oh, I mean, I, I, I can't deal with it. I just cannot deal with it. I can't deal with it. Yankees lose another tough one. Seven straight. We're out of first place now. Yankees actually haven't lost seven straight since like 2007. I don't even remember that that time. Pineda, you know what? Before our freaking asses were in the seat, you know, before we even got comfortable to sit down, we're already down like one run. It's like, what happened? You know, he didn't have it in that first inning. He was kind of battling. He had 26 pitches in the first inning, 27. And he had almost, almost 40 some odd pitches, almost 50 pitches by the second inning. But then he did settle down. So I'm going to give him credit. You know what, Pineda, today, you're not getting the blame for this, okay? Chris Carter also made a freaking error, which, that's another guy. We're going to talk about him in a second. I'm not blaming Pineda for this loss. You give us five, two-third innings, three-run ball at Yankee Stadium. Fine, he started horribly. Got his pitch count up, and it's the reason why the bullpen ended up having to come in. Fine, you want to blame him for that? Okay, fine. But sometimes pitchers do find themselves, and they're able to at least get you something. And he didn't completely implode, you know, so then that's fine. I mean, Pineda's pitching line is not even that bad, honestly. He only had one earned run, even though he, he did have three runs. Um, two of them were unearned. Gave him seven hits, though. That is, that's a problem. I mean, you don't want to give up that many hits. Uh, that is an issue, but he gave up the hits, then ended up, he only walked one, seven Ks, five and two-thirds inning, not bad. I mean, you would have preferred for him to go longer, you know, maybe get into the seventh inning, get the ball directly to Batanzas, but hey, you know what, whatever. Can we just piece together maybe one inning for him, please? Maybe one and a third. That's all we needed to do. Piece together one and a third. Because even though we were down 3-zip, and it almost felt in Yankee Stadium, I'm not even going to lie, Yankee Stadium today felt dead. It felt like a team that just felt like, even though we were down 3-0, I don't know if it's because of the losing streak, but we were down 3-0, it felt like we were down 9-zip, 10-zip. It felt insurmountable. And, you know, Headley had a good at-bat where he got a sack fly. And um, Judge, again, with an opposite field bomb. I mean, he is amazing. Kept it, at, kept it at three runs. Gary Sanchez comes up and ties the freaking game, man. He ties the game. And um, we're able to then get into the seventh inning tied. And that's when all hell breaks loose. Enter the seventh inning. See... In the sixth inning, when Pineda was, got, you know, he didn't really get into trouble, you know, gave up one base hit, Girardi took him out. Some people would have said, you know, leave him in, he has 106 pitches. I understand, Joe, why you took him out. Fine, take him out, that's it. Take him out on, on a good note, and that's it. You know, fine. Bring in Chase and Shreve, Bopin got to be able to do his job. Chase and Shreve come, uh, comes in, does a great job, and ends up getting the out. And I'm thinking, you know, at that point, it's a 3-3 game, you know, after Gary Sanchez ties it with the home run, opposite field, mind you. And I'm thinking, you know, Chase Shreve only came out and he only got one person out. 
why not bring him back out and that's it but then enter this incompetent unreliable not a leverage situational pitcher and I'm going to drown you in stats right now from Katie stats um, you're going to see I call her Katie stats by the way it's Katie sharp on Twitter make sure you do follow her um, this guy Clipper comes in and coughs the shit up like seriously he comes in gives up a freaking home run to Cameron Mabin right I'm telling you this guy I don't care about what his ERA was his web uh, whatever numbers you want to try to throw at me to try to disguise I mean you could try to put sprinkles on a piece of shit at the end of the day it is a piece of shit Joe brought him in because he's so stuck in these role situations. Look, there's only two people that need to be in a damn role. They need to they have earned the right to have an inning. And that is Batantis and Chapman. That's it. Everybody else, hottest pitcher is, is going to be the one that's out there. Okay, I don't want to see Jonathan Holder. He's not the hottest pitcher. I don't want to see Clifford. He's not the hottest pitcher. I don't, you know, I don't want to see some of these other uh, other people. If you're in there, if you're getting out, you're pitching the next frame. And Jason Shreve got the out in a strikeout. He's been having good stuff lately. Bring him back out for the freaking seventh. Why not? You know, I don't really like to question Joe too much because I feel like Joe is really good with the bullpen for the most part, right? And he, at the end of the day, he can make the right move managerial-wise managerial as far as the numbers are concerned, and that's all you got to do because at the end of the day, the players have to go out there and perform, you know? But that right there is a clear second guess. Everybody knows, two-way man, that Clippard right now is struggling, and he is in a rut. I'm sorry, the time to work out that rut and the time to be able to work through that is not in the seventh inning in a high leverage situation with the game on the line. I'm sorry, it's not. You got to work out your stuff in some kind of le low leverage situation, either down three runs or down five runs or up five, seven runs, whatever it is. Some of the people that I want to see in higher leverage situations are people like, you know, Chad Green. I think he has earned it. He has really good stuff right Jason Shreve is another guy but before everybody tries to protect Clipper they tr they're going to try I know them I'm going to show you a couple of stats right now the first one Tyler Clipper has four losses this season only Yankee with more is Masahiro Tanaka think about it this counts all of the starters all of the relievers also in there and he is the only one that has four losses and he has done nothing but contribute to losses all throughout the season all right this is this one is a pretty good one entering today tyler clippert had a 652 slugging percentage allowed in high leverage appearances um that went up after today yes in big time appearances and basically high leverage what that means is just basically in close games big time games and if you want the actual definition for it i'll put the link in the description uh to that article but in big time situations he look at the slugging percentage that he is giving up i mean that is robust so here's another stat they're even making up stats for this guy tyler clippert had nine meltdowns per fan graphs entering today the most among al pitchers uh add one more and she has a link there i'll put the link in the description so that you guys can be able to take a look at it but it basically shows you on there um what a meltdown is categorized as is how much does your outing basically negatively affect your team's probability of winning? And apparently, Clippard is leading all American League pitchers in this freaking category. All right, so here's another one here. This is courtesy of, of course, River Eye Blues and Katie Sharp. So Clippard has a shiny two ERA with a 158 batting average allowed, um, but has been horrible and critical at bats this season. He's allowed, and then that's the slash line, um, in high leverage plate appearances that equal a 436 WOBA. Now, that's a weighed on base average, which basically ranks him seventh amongst 
uh, pitchers that have faced at least 25 batters in those situations. If you want to reference what a really high um, weight on base average is, it's basically Aaron Judge, what he had through the whole season through Tuesday. So if you take a look there, basically, and those numbers have gone up, actually, because she wrote this actually on the 15th. So his ERA right now, as it stands today, on the 21st of June, when I'm recording this, uh, it is at a 3.14. So it's jumped about a whole run um, in a week now. So, I mean, he's definitely trending in the wrong direction. I mean, if that doesn't convince you, nothing will. I mean, you... All I have to say to you, really, is just go get a Clipper jersey and become a Clipper fan, and that's it. That's all I have to say. I mean, he is, to me, the guy is trash, and he's shunned. That's it. It's a tough time right now. Seven-game losing streak. We just lost first place. But you know what? Joe Girardi said something, you know, Again, something important. He said, now is when you can tell what kind of team you are. You can tell a lot of, a lot about a team's character and a lot about the players and the locker room's character, uh, you know, to see when they, how they react when they lose. So, you know, I guess that could be like a silver lining thing that you can kind of see. It's a young team. They get to learn how to deal with losses and how to bounce back from it. So, remember, we're still learning, you know, it's still a learning process for some of these kids. You know, uh, going through a first major league season, some of them, not all of them. One other person other than Clipper that I wanted to go ahead and just blame out there. I mean, Chris Carter is albatross right now. I mean, the guy I believe in his last 14 at bats, he's one for 14. And now he's, he's, I mean, for the most part, he's been okay at the bag, but he makes the most inopportune errors. It's kind of like Headley's errors. They end up leading to, like, runs all the time. Um, Chris Carter, I just, I don't have faith in the guy. I don't. And, you know, yes, it's so easy to say, you know what, let's go ahead and go get a first baseman. But, you know, there are options out there. Um, personally, I would love for Bird to come back and just kind of take it, you know, take the bull by the horns and be healthy and play like how Bird can play because uh, that would be so great and so important so we wouldn't have to go out there and go get uh, a lefty swinging first baseman from some team like Yonder Alonso, which is pretty good. I do like him, but I just don't want to have to give up assets for first base. That wasn't supposed to be a problem this year. Uh, I would like to use those assets to be able to go to maybe get like a bullpen arm that we need, you know, reliable bullpen arm or maybe even get like a starter or something like that. I mean, I, I just don't want to waste it on that. Jojo already said it best. And if you read between the lines, you could already see what it is. They just asked him in the press conference, oh, I mean, is he your first baseman? He's like, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's what we have. I mean, what, what does that tell you? It tells you that Joe Girardi, he's, if he had a better option, obviously he would put that in over Carter. You could tell Joe, Joe Girardi does not have that kind of confidence in him. And um, neither does the team, really, with those kind of situations. I'm not saying that they're kind of ostracizing him in the clubhouse, but I, it's just not a good look. But that's it, guys. I mean... Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I know it's a lot, but I feel like I did need to take some time to be able to show some of these people that are just so blind with Clipper, yeah. just looking at the overall numbers and, you know, and everything right now and just taking a look at that. But hopefully tomorrow behind Montgomery we'll just come out and get a win. Um, as I always say, guys, make sure you do keep the pinstripes on, keep the pinstripes strong. And let's go Yankees, man. Let's stop this streak, man. Let's get back to first place. And um, let's go, man. Peace.